Thank you, Mr. Mendez, uh, UN Special Rapporteur on Torture, for coming to the APT today. Uh, we've convened a meeting with a number of international experts, including you, to discuss the use of evidence that has been obtained through torture by the police, security and intelligence agencies. What would you say is the relevance of the issues we've been discussing today? Uh, what is wrong with using information obtained by torture? Well, it's very relevant, especially in the last few years uh, after the beginning of the so-called war on terror. Uh, up until then, uh, this was not uh, much of an issue. International law clearly prohibited uh, torture and uh, it specifically prohibited uh, the use of torture in any proceeding against the victim. Uh, but we didn't realize the extent to which uh, intelligence agencies could share information. Um, and uh, the, the, the problem is that if they do share information, they are implicitly encouraging torture. And many people would agree that uh, security intelligence agents sort of need to operate outside the law. Does international law really apply limits to uh, the actions of security and intelligence actors? Yeah, well, I come from a region of, uh, uh, of the world, Latin America, where letting uh, security uh, agencies uh, act outside the law has resulted in incredible tragedies uh, of disappearances, torture, uh, widespread torture, uh, prolonged arbitrary detention, extrajudicial killings, uh, massacres in the countryside, uh, you name it. And uh, it, 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 it's not only the tragedies themselves with the incredible cost in human lives and suffering, but also now that we have democratic uh, 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 governments or democratically elected governments just about everywhere except Cuba, uh, we still have a problem with uh, security agencies that are outside the control of the democratic uh, system. Uh, it's very difficult to re-establish uh, civilian control over police bodies and because of that we also don't have an, an effective instrument against crime. So thinking um, exclusively from the perspective of uh, Latin America, I can see that there are lessons that, sh that should be learned and that should caution on uh, this uh, idea that uh, intelligence agencies necessarily have to act outside the law. When they act outside the law, they probably, uh, they, they almost, almost always uh, generate more problems than they solve. And yes, international law does uh, create uh, uh, barriers or, or, or create uh, obstacles to acting in that manner. At the very least, international law prohibits uh, the use of uh, um, uh, torture and cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment, and it prohibits it absolutely without any uh, emergency justifying it. But in addition, international law also obligate states to prevent uh, torture from happening and, um, and to exercise due diligence in preventing torture. So it seems to me like with those uh, you know, minimum standards, we have some uh, uh, building blocks from which we can uh, create standards that will be effective uh, in uh, preventing torture, but at the same time would not um, you know, uh, tie the hands of intelligence uh, agencies or security agencies that need to be able to fight crime and particularly fight uh, terrorism. Well, over the last decade, we've been reminded of the use of torture-tainted information in the war against terrorism. What would you say to someone who asserts that uh, it is right in, in cases of terrorism to use valuable intelligence to capture a known terrorist? even if that information had been obtained by torture? Well, I think that that uh, sends the security and, and, uh, and intelligence agencies into a very slippery slope. Um, uh, and uh, we, we, first, I don't uh, believe that it's necessary to torture or to use torture-tainted evidence um, for, uh, for, for purposes of... Gather, of uh, uh, of fighting terrorism, uh, but even if it is used in, in, uh, for that purpose, uh, it actually 
uh, yields the, the moral high ground to the to the terrorists because they can propagandize the fact that they that their members have been subjected to torture, and it becomes uh, an a formidable recruiting tool. So we actually uh, perpetuate the problem of terrorism rather than fighting it effectively. Do you think we need more precise standards recommending how state actors use information where there is a risk that it has been obtained by torture? Yes, I think we do need uh, more precise standards and we need to have an open and, uh, and wide-ranging debate about what those standards should be. Because, but, but, but there should be standards that uh, uh, build upon the standards that we already have. Uh, torture is wrong and it's absolutely prohibited under all circumstances. Uh, and states have a duty to prevent it from happening. So from that uh, point on, um, we should uh, uh, debate standards because right, right now the only uh, black letter of the law that we have on the use of uh, torture-tainted evidence seems to refer mostly to, um, to uh, evidence used in proceedings against uh, the torture victim. And so we, it doesn't really say anything about, for example, using torture-tainted evidence to decide on immigration cases, for example, on deportation, on extradition, uh, or even on executive action of any other sort. I, I don't think there, must be, there, there would be much of a problem in gathering and collecting evidence, even obtained under torture, just for intelligence gathering purposes only. But when you're going to, uh, when, when you talk about actionable intelligence, that is when you decide operations on the basis of intelligence, uh, it's very difficult to, to conceive of the ability to use uh, evidence, for example, for targeting individuals for arrest or for killing um, on the basis of torture tainted evidence. One, because the uh, possibility of human error uh, is, is large, but also, and more importantly, because in, if, uh, if, if we let governments operate in that fashion, we're really letting them encourage torturers to continue torturing. And the whole purpose of the exclusionary rule, as it's called, is precisely, is not so much to provide <clears throat> a fair trial uh, or to eliminate the possibility of error, it is more, uh, it's most importantly, for the purposes of, dis, uh, uh, of discouraging and, and providing a disincentive for torture. Finally, what are some of the practical challenges involved in prohibiting the use of torture-tainted information? Uh, what solutions could you provide to overcome such challenges? Well, the challenge is mostly that intelligence gathering uh, operates in the dark. And it's not necessarily illegal, but it is, uh, uh, it is uh, confidential, it is secret. And, uh, and states have all kinds of manners uh, of preventing the information from coming out. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, that, that also means that the oversight mechanisms mostly even in highly developed countries tend to be also secretive. And so the public doesn't really know whether the information has been obtained under torture or not. <coughs> and, and doesn't really know how it's been used. So I think the main challenge is uh, uh, not only drafting um, uh, appropriate guidelines, but also uh, creating the mechanisms by which we can uh, really establish whether those guidelines are being used and being used effectively or not, I think that's going to be the most difficult task ahead.